When Michigan comes to town, the Indiana faithful expect traditional warfare. So step inside Bobby Knight's castle for what's become one of the most anticipated rivalry of his last four. Michigan has won four of its last five. As we welcome you to Bloomington, Dave Barnett along with Vic Vital. Michigan with a great start, hit a slump, but they appear to have weathered their problems. And Indiana, after a 14 and one start, coming off a 17 point loss pick Saturday at Purdue. How do they get their arrow pointed back up? I tell you, Dave, it's going to even be tougher tonight because we just learned that Andre Patterson will not play. His knee began to swell, and therefore he told me a little bit earlier, I can't dress him. Get into the action. What's going to have to happen? Charlie Miller's going to have to score. Reed's going to have to make some big threes like he did last year when he knocked down eight. Mouye Zenovich is going to have to rebound, and they're going to have to play the perfect game against the most talented team, I believe, in the Big Ten. In a one-game scenario, you can rise without a star. Long haul, they couldn't survive without Andre Patterson. Tonight is today's best trying to make their mark in a storied tradition. The greats of the past will be watching the stars of the present. It's Michigan and Indiana. Memphis of Indiana University. Indiana at 15 and 4, but tied for seventh in Big Ten play at two and three. Michigan 13 and 4 at four and two in the conference tied for third. As Steve Fisher in his eighth year goes with this lineup, Lewis Bullock, the leading scorer and fifth best in the conference. Last year lit it up here. Seven three-pointers, 27 points. Indiana with the change because of the dislocated knee of Andre Patterson. Harris, Mouye Zinovich, the senior 6'9 man from Chicago, gets his ninth start of the year. Patterson had been the only man that Bob Knight had had in his starting lineup every game all season long, but now that changes. Indiana's going to have to have a good start right out of the gate to get the crowd to give them a little momentum. Very difficult playing without your star. Rebound in Indiana has really, really struggled on the glass, especially on the offensive rebounding end of it. They've been out-rebounded 2-1, to one, and that means you're not playing aggressive basketball. Andre Patterson not in uniform. Collier's going to have to play big, Dave. Not like he did against Purdue, where he was a no-show. Brad Miller had 25 to his two. Listen to the splash, Dave. Oh, listen to it. It's as good as it gets in Big Ten play. Mouye Zinovich almost had the tip. They'll try it again as he jumps with Maurice Taylor. I'll tell you, the one concern is Steve Fisher has to be whether his kids get a little bit overconfident knowing that they got blown out by Purdue and they're playing without Andre Patterson. That's the same Purdue Michigan wiped out last Thursday, 89-65. Right away, an air ball by Taylor. And the diving rebound for Mouye Zinovich. It's a hell ball. I think you're going to see one heck of an effort today. I can guarantee you that. Bobby Knight told me before the game, he said, I don't know whether we're going to win or not, but you're going to see a superb effort. Offensive rebounds, we talked about forced turnovers. They've only forced about 15 per game. That's not a high number in the Big Ten, and they need some shot blocking. Well, I think those three elements really indicate whether or not you're playing aggressive basketball. Neil Reed in the matchup with Travis Conlon. Uye Zinovich will be a screener, number 55. Nice save by Collier. They're going to need some post presence. Nice cut. Neil Reed on the backhand. Well, great cut without the basketball. Mouye Zinovich going to be going around laying some big time screens. Action in the middle of the paint. We'll draw the first foul of the game on Mouye Zinovich. Look at Reed cutting without the basketball right down the lane. Conlon trails the play. Playing from behind. Never seen ball, you man. You must see both. Gerard Ward, one of these steps. The junior out of Clinton, Mississippi, playing about as well as he has in a Michigan uniform, having had knee surgery wipe out each of his first two years. Came in so highly rated. He and Felipe Lopez were rated by many services, number one, two in America. Lopez has certainly had a good career, not a great career, in terms of trying to live up to all that hype. Nice fake. Nice fake. Oh, oh, is he pumped up? Is he pumped up? Emotion, intensity. Steve Fisher better tell his kids they better come to play. 
And an offensive foul on the tractor trailer. I'll tell you, Muya Zinovich is so pumped up, Dave. I don't know if you can last this and sustain it. But look at that triple threat position. Look at him flying down the lane. I mean, he made like a superstar there. Bob Knight says having lost 35 pounds, he's now the quickest, fastest big man they've ever had at Indiana. Nice. Another Michigan foul. Their demise really started after a heartbreaking loss to Minnesota when they had Minnesota seven down with 55 ticks on the clock and lost in overtime. And then since then, they struggled. Struggled against Northwestern and winning. Traveling. Jason Collier gives it right back. He is really struggling. They got to get him to be a little bit quicker with his feet, a little bit more aggressive on the inside. He has good touch and he has size. Jason Collier, two points, three boards at Purdue Saturday, both season lows, and he fouled out in 13 minutes as Brad Miller lit him up for a career-high 25 points. Last three games, he's been in single digits at 25 against Michigan State. Reed's hustle play does not net him a steal, but it keeps the crowd on their feet. I tell you, there's a lot of electricity here right now, Dave. And they need it. And I think the crowd recognizes that without Patterson, they're going to need uh, more than the extra effort from them. The 17,000 in assembly hall. How you're trying to beat trailer to a spot, not allowing him to post up on him. Or doing what he's really done well of late, hit the three. Yeah, he's been knocking down the trifecta. He's had some really productive games. Count it. I mean, they're getting a positive performance out of the gate from their reserve. Mia Zinovich could ask for more than that right out of the gate. Just shows you what could happen when you play with some intensity and emotion. He beats Trailer to the baseline. No one rotates over in their defensive scheme. And look how pumped up he is. He had a great game against Duke. Screening, only scored 11 points, but he was such a key part of winning that NIT championship. Well, not only does he finish the three-point play, he's got Trailer on the bench with two fouls. And just Michigan, over two minutes into the game. And Michigan, not a very deep team. They have seven players they rotate. Macy Obaston, and then replaces Trailer, out for Travis Conlon three. He's been looking at the basket a little bit more, Conlon. Knocked out by Ward. One thing Michigan, at times, Dick, has been criticized for this year is not getting back in transition defense. Well, defensive transition is so important, making teams play a five-on-five. Five. They had that one slump you talked about earlier when they went out to Hawaii and got beat by Pittsburgh and Memphis. Three games in 72 hours, and it took them a, a good week or two to recover, although Steve Fisher refused to use it as the reason for their uh, different record. Charlie Miller. I'll tell you, I keep wondering when he's going to break out. Had a great scholastic career in Miami. You watch him practice. He's got nice technique. Third leading scorer in Florida high school history out of Miami. Makes it 9-3 Hoosiers. Maurice Taylor is long, and it's rebounded by Miller. Miller with an aggressive rebound. They're aware of Reed. Reed knocked down eight trifectors against them last year. Offensive foul, and this time they're pointing the finger at Jason Collier. After losing to Ohio State at home in their opener after the Hawaii trip, Steve Fisher told me we got to make that up by getting a win on a road against somebody that's quality. Well, this will qualify. Oh, no question. Anytime you can come to Bloomington and get a W, this is one of the tough places to win. That's why Clem to Jim Haskins had a big win to get that old tier against them after being down by seven. Lewis Bullock handles it. I believe the first time tonight. They're scoring leading. The kid that's got to be a little more active for Michigan is Maurice Taylor. Baston hard to the hole. They got some quick athletes on their front court. Baston from out of Texas said no to Kentucky. Oh, what a tough blow for Kentucky. We sent our, <laughs> our best out to Kentucky, losing, for example, Derek Anderson for the right. year. Knee surgery, one of the great players in America. Reed with a three in Indiana has not missed from the field. Five for five. Reed just cleared out to that three-point line, which they like to drift to. Conlon into some traffic. And we'll go to the line. Mouye Zinovich now joining Trailer with two fouls apiece. 
Yeah, that was a tough break for Kentucky. I really feel, when I mean, you look at Kentucky, certainly now Wayne Turner's got to play big, and certainly Allen Edwards is going to have to step. Edwards is going to have to step up as well. There's the versatility. But the loss of Anderson, I think, puts them on a step below in terms of trying to go back-to-back -back and winning national championships. He had such a great, great year. Would have been a top-five selection in the NBA draft. The flow for the Wildcats. Conlon, just a 54% free throw shooter, hits some both. Indiana, perfect from the field. The read three makes it 12-7. Hey, Dave, we're going to show how to get a good shot. Shot selection is so important. Watch right here as they're going to flare out to get a screen for Reed. Freeze it right here. Now, right here, you're going to watch number five. He is going to flare out to the corner as we watch Muyazinovic with the screen. We watch the ball come back, reverse it, step out, the flare move, and knock down the three. Perfect execution and utilizing the screen. And no one did it better in a Hoosier uniform than Steve Alford when he led him to that national title in 1987. The head coach of Southwest Missouri State now. He said, come on, fans, come out and support us. They're not getting enough fans. They better come out or Steve Walker, the rising star, or go elsewhere. Or even if they do come out, he may end up elsewhere. I think he's going to be a hot ticket. Charlie Miller, shot clock down to eight. Brandon Hughes has checked in and stays tightly on Reed, who leans in. Seemed to draw some contact, and I think expected the three-point opportunity. Seven for Neil Reed and a seven-point lead. I'll tell you, he's had some big moments. Knocked down 15 in a row against Northwestern. Didn't play in the first half. Straight on three, just off by Ward, but rebounded by Baston. And that will be two on Collier. Maurice Taylor really, I believe his problem, why he's not scoring as big as he could, is he's not active enough without the basketball. He's got a world of talent where he can be a dominating player, and I love his ability. Taylor has gone through some games, uh, four in a row recently, in fact, where he had single-figure shot attempts. You don't expect that from arguably the best man on your team. Well, now some people were projecting him to be the player of the year in a Big Ten prior to the start of the season. I would say if you voted now for the player of the year at the mid-point mark, you got to think Andre Woolridge up at Iowa. He's Absolutely. been sensational for Dr. Tom Davis. Fast and call for the offensive foul for Michigan. Another nice feed by Mugge Zinovich, but traveling on Charlie Miller. The one thing, Dave, is going to have to happen for Indiana. they got to get some post presence out of number 40, Jason Collier. You can't have a seven-footer with his touch getting two and four points. He's got to become very active inside, especially without Patterson. Two against Purdue, four in the win over Northwestern. And has dropped his average to an even 10 per game. Bullock hits the bottom of the iron. With his first shot attempt of the evening. Miller off the glass, short on the pull-up. Finds his own board easily enough, and a wide-open three for Reed. Good position on the Baston rebound, and four Hoosiers back quickly to stop the any Michigan running attack. Match up inside, Mouye Zinovich leaning all over Taylor. Baston held off by Collier. In and out on Hughes, three. Bullock, of all people, down here to steal an offensive rebound. He knocked out seven for 11 from there last year. Hello. Gerard Ward on the follow. Showing why he was player of the year in Mississippi in high school. Really showing flashes of some of the brilliance that the scouting gurus in high school, like Bob Gibbons, saw when they raided him. And apparently the knees are okay when you see him elevate like that. Any lingering questions fade away. See, Caillou's got to be a little bit more active. He's standing. And the easiest guy to play is the guy that stands. He's got to be active like that to last in the basketball. He's got big touch. Player of the year in Ohio. Indiana started three freshmen in the opener for the first time ever under Bob Knight. Another Ward three. He's a rhythm shooter. If he gets in that rhythm, he's also starting to get comfortable at Michigan. It's taken him a little longer than some because I really believe down deep he was hurt by all the publicity and not living up to it really, really bothered him. Miller, nice spin by Mouye Zinovich. And Miller there to chase down his offensive rebound. Number four for Miller. Patience has got to be important for Indiana. Use some of the shot clock. Knighton hasn't got involved offensively. Here he is, A.J., with a nice dish. 
Reed with the miss, and if Indiana doesn't hurry back, it's a three on two. Instead, it's an offensive foul on Brandon Hughes. Brandon Hughes a little bit out of control there. Played big in that win over Iowa, where Tom Davis is doing wonders playing without Jess Settles, who may have been the best all-around player in the Big Ten. Here goes Hughes. He's going to take it coast to coast. And right there is the contact. He's up in the air. That's no man's land. Coaches preach all the time. Don't get yourself caught up in the air. Steve Fisher says about Brandon Hughes, we need him to be right at the edge of out of control. A little bit beyond the edge that time. Michael Lewis. He has really played well in the Big Ten. Knocked down his four first four trifectas from out of Indiana. I believe he's from Jasper, Indiana. Was a big-time scorer. Finished second in the balloting for Mr. Basketball. Kevin Hall playing for Steve Orford. Taylor decides to stay outside. He scores over Richard Mandeville, who has come on. I'll tell you one thing. Maurice Taylor needs another year of college. He's got to get a little bit more to his game and learning how to play without the ball. He's got great touch, and he's a beautiful kid. Lewis, one of those Indiana freshmen. A.J. Guyton, another one, and he is held as he tries to go around Lewis Bullock. I always get a kick of people telling me today, what's happened to the Hoosiers? They've really been slumping in the 90s. Hey, in the 90s, they went to the NCAA tournament the last two years. They were possibly could have won the national title in 93 if they had Allen Henderson, but he was hurt. 11.55 to go in the first. Indiana's led all the way. Sure, a happy birthday. In fact, get her address, and I'll send her a gift. Are you kidding me? I'll send her an autograph for the ball. Wow, happy birthday. Look at those banners right there, 76, 81, 87. Almost every five years, then in six years, and in 93, I believe they would have had one if Henderson doesn't get hurt with that great team with Calvert Chain, Greg Graham. They lost in the final eight. Heck, people want to know, 92, they were in the final four. In the 90s, they just haven't been able to put a banner up there. I mean, it's not easy right now. If they win in 93, I think they're like a year or two away. I think 99, when they get this kid Luke Wrecker, all these freshmen become juniors, they're going to be unbelievably tough. Well, the street people are watching now. Bobby Knight has never gone four years in a row without a Big Ten title. This would be the fourth year. Michael Lewis has come off Bobby Knight's bench smoking tonight. His ninth three of the year, 21-14 Hoosier. And he got right in the gap. Michigan rotated out of the timeout to a 2-3 zone. I don't think we'll see them play the 2-3 a great deal. Off balance, it goes for Brandon Hughes. It's Trailer, who had two fouls in the first two minutes, returns for Michigan. See, I would go right after Trailer right now to get the third. I would try to attack him on the interior. I would drive toward Trailer. So they're going to go to 2-3 to try and protect him a little bit. No, they're back playing man now. Back playing man to man. Robbie Eggers has just checked in. He is the man the Trailer's guarding and not an offensive threat. Averaging less than a point per game. Eggers, shot clock at eight. Well, makes a move off balance. Passed it in control. Well, it's good to see him at least be aggressive offensively. They've controlled Bullock, who I really love. I think Bullock's one of the Super 7 Souths in America. You think about guys like Pierce and Mercer. Trailer turns on Mandeville. And Robert Trailer's still looking for his first points. Tractor Trailer has really been impressive this year, rebounding and really doing a solid job on the inside. A.J. Guyton, rebounded by Mandeville. Prior to the shot, the foul will be on Baston for Michigan. Tune in Thursday. We have first round coverage coming. Great Souths. What about Antoine Jameson, Chauncey Billups? I would put Jelani McCoy in that group along with Bullock. They would be my super seven. Talking about the likes of, for example, earlier, as I mentioned, some of the great Souths in America, Mercer and Pierce. Front end of the first bonus of the night. Almost an air ball. Oh, nobody got back. Bullock misses, tipped up and in, though, by Taylor. Nice play by Maurice Taylor with that left hand, that tip. Part of a recruiting class that was rated number one in America when he came, and Trailer's class was rated number one in America. Beggars. A.J. Guyton's been under control so far. He's going to have to step it up a little bit. Didn't get back defensively. Taylor fouled by Mandeville. He started the sequence with the missed outside shot. 
They wanted the intentional of breakdown defensively in transition by Indiana. They're not getting the rotation to get the balance to get on back. See Guyton now coming back very slowly. They're getting the ball over the top, getting it down the court quickly. Maurice Taylor, Dick, maybe the most surprising uh, stat about Michigan's Big Ten play. Averaging 9.2 per game, he's their sixth leading scorer in conference play. Well, you know, he averaged 14 a game last year at seven rebounds. He really was an outstanding player. Played at Henry Ford High School in Detroit, Michigan, where they have a solid program. Had a big year. I shot 51% last year. He seems to be, I know he had the flu earlier this year and lost some weight, but he just doesn't seem to have that aggressiveness that I seen last year. Oh, there's a push inside. You got to call that. Call if they do. And the trouble for the tractor trailer mounts now. Three personals. Yeah, not a good play by tractor. He knows his club really needs a. You don't need this right here. Throwing a guy away. A little but, acting. Yeah, a little bit of a acting. A little bit of but he definitely made contact, and you're too valuable to your team. you got to understand your role. Robert Trail is sitting on a bench. is not where Steve Fisher wants him. He doesn't need him as an assistant coach. Comes from a great family. I tell you, his grandma's a beautiful lady, and this kid has got a heart of gold. I'll tell you what, though. Eggers again missing the front end. Miller for the offensive board, and he draws the foul. Well, Miller's showing some aggressiveness right now. From out of Miami, where Leonard Hallett is doing a heck of a job. Oh, another soft I missed there. And my Super 7 was Tim James from out of Miami. I knew I had seven. I had six I identified with you. But the seventh would have been Tim James. This kid's been an enigma to me. I just think this kid has big-time ability. He can run the floor, good transition. But that's a fair coach. I mean, he entertained you, myself, and my wife before the game. I mean, was he really unbelievable there? What did you see, Dave? Mr. Charm. Oh, he yeah. turned it on. Look at this. 203 more free throw attempts than the opponents on the year. That's normal here for Indiana. They normally get to the line with their screening, their cutting, and slashing. Yeah, he was really charming. I, I tell you, it was beautiful. You couldn't believe how I was so lucky to get such a beautiful wife. Well, some of us join uh, Bobby in, in being a little, a little bit mystified. There's a walk right there. <laughs> I'll tell you, Indiana could not ask for a better start than what they've had here, knowing they're playing without Patterson, coming off that blowout, but they were a little bit sulking and pouting after getting blown out by Purdue and Gene Cady. And yet, Michigan, for all their trouble, foul trouble with Taylor, or Trailer, who has not scored or rebounded tonight, only down by five. Now, you're not going to get away with them, get away from them right now, because personnel-wise, there's no doubt Michigan's got the better personnel. Knocked away from Hughes. And he'll read. I really believe one to seven, Michigan's the most talented team in the Big Ten, even though I certainly like the composition of that Minnesota team. And if you talk about Woolridge being a sensation, my Big Ten guard at the midpoint mark with Woolridge would be Bobby Jackson. And not too far behind him would be his backward mate, Eric Harrison. Yeah, from out of New York City. Doing a solid job. Their whole team is. Straight on, wide open three at last. It falls to Lewis Bullock. Bullock, you can't allow him to shoot that shot. Played on the USA gold medal team along with Maurice Taylor, Tim Duncan, the 22 and under team. Said he was so thrilled when he had a chance to play one on one with Isaiah Thomas. He said it absolutely went wild when Isaiah came up to Michigan. Nice cut. Great cut without the ball. That is Indiana basketball. Ball movement. Look at Andre. He's a cheerleader and he's cheering his teammates on. Perfect execution in their motion game. Lob inside to Taylor. Quickly trapped. Leans misses. Rebound. Ward, his follow, rattles it home. Gerard Ward having a big, big first half for the Wolverines. That's 10 for Ward, who averages 10. Pair of three-pointers. Bullock now with his second foul. Watch Reed right now. He's going to give it up and watch him cut. Now look at this. He makes a nice cut. We're going to see him flare out and then cut off the back screen. And he bumps Bullock and he gets a little layup. Great move. And look at Andre. He's cheering. Andre, he's cheering. He said he may be ready for Sunday against Penn State. And as Lewis steps like you talked about it, Reed cannot afford to have another performance like he did at Purdue, and he's not. Seven points Saturday. 
already nine in this first half. Well, Bobby said the difference in a game was that the upperclassmen for Purdue really stepped up big. Miller with 25, and Austin had 19. He said our upperclassmen were absolutely missing in action. Lewis, a nice contribution off the bench. There's a total of six. Indiana's lead is three. I would get some touches to Taylor. They got to get Taylor involved. This foul will go on Gerard Ward. Oh, could be a technical. In, uh, could be a T. Yes, sir. Wondering if any official saw that, and at last, the, the farthest actually away from it, slaps him with the T. I think right now, if I'm Steve Fisher, I just take him out for a moment. He's having a great first half. Steve's got the jacket off. Doesn't need, look at the intensity. Look at Steve Fisher. Look at that intensity. Who said he's a calm, cool guy? Won the national title in 1989. Has never won the Big Ten championship, and that's one of their big goals. Going to watch the contact here. They get the foul on Ward, reach it in. Now watch. Does a little talk to the official, and he bangs the ball down. You know, he really, really didn't slam it heavily. I don't know about that technical. I just wonder. I know a little unsportsman. I think the crowd played a big role in that, too. You know, you might draw the line on this topic. You know, did he, did he bounce it in frustration at himself, which I think he did, or frustration at the call, which didn't appear to be the case, and that's the case that Steve Fisher continues to make. Bobby Knight very upset. Doesn't like that they're huddling up on that sideline. I think he was really a little bit frustrated with the official. I really do, Dave, there. Yeah, I really do. But I don't think he warranted that he really, really banged that sucker down. I, I, I don't know. I think a little bit quick with the tee. I think sometimes you go over to the kid and say, if that happens again, I'm going to give you the tee. Well, Neil Reed, 85% free throw shooter, second only the Bullock in the Big Ten. Hey, maybe I'll go out and shoot him. I knocked out 14 in a row before the game. Did you really? Yeah, I really did. I had the band going nuts. I was on fire. This guy can shoot free throws. That's your best streak of the year. Well, they, I was starting to wonder about the third free throw, as was Steve Fisher. And now rethinking. Well, see, Reed's trying to step to that line, but he wasn't the player I don't believe that was fouled in that sequence. Was it? Evidently he was. Was he the guy fouled in that point? Guess it was Reed. And see, I think waiting around too long cost him to miss that shot. Get out of your rhythm. Steve's got to regroup his kids and forget about that play and get them to start playing basketball. They're only five down. Indiana will get the ball out of bounds. Reed hitting three of four stretches the Indiana lead to six with 7.51 to go. First half at Noisy Assembly Hall. Hey, wh what is that now? Who made that up? Did you make that up on me, Dave? I can't believe that. Where'd you get that sucker? Hey, this foul was definitely on Reed. There's Ward right there with Reed all tangled up. Number five, good call by the officials. The foul was on Reed. Therefore, they had the right guy shooting the free throws. And he got three out of the four. Hey, life, not that easy. Steve Fisher's finding out. Life's not that easy. Not as easy as winning six in a row, winning a national title, and making your debut as a head coach. 1989, he replaced Bill Freedom. Zone right now by Michigan. Zone. Jason Collier and Mandeville together. Big front line in the absence of Andre Patterson. Reed continues to get open threes. And Miller continues to voraciously grab offensive rebounds. That's his sixth total. Give it inside. They missed him. Should have given it inside to Collier. He's got to be more active. He's got to step to the ball. Got to flash to the ball, number 40. Up fake. Lewis gets himself open. I'll tell you, Michael Lewis has been big. He's been a PT peer here in the first half, making all the big shots. Eight for Lewis off the bench, who averages six per game, and the lead is the largest of the night for Indiana. They really, they really like Lewis. Bobby Knight says he plays hard. Listen to this crowd. Oh, this is college hoops, baby. Bullock almost 
drag the foot. Shot clock at three. Conlon. Lewis starts a three on one. Oh, a little showtime around the back. Nice job by the Wolverines scrambling back. Yeah, Wolverines did a great job defensively in transition. They're going to try to play a little matchup zone, Michigan. We can get some shots against this. If they reverse the basketball, swing it side to side, send them to the overload. They're doing it now. They're going to flare up. There it is. There it is. Oh, they got the exact shot through the overload to the zone side. Green starting to cool off after a terrific first five or six minutes. They're doubling up on a post inside. Aston fouled by Collier, and that's three on Jason Collier. Jason looks one step behind the action. He has really got to work on mobility and on his footwork. He really has to listen to these coaches and dedicate himself to jump and roll and working on getting a lot quicker. When I coached Bob Lanier, who I thought should have been on a list of all those NBA greats that they announced, the Hall of Famer, Bob really worked so hard on jump and roll to do the agility drills to develop foot quickness. Aston. 68% free throw shooter with his third. Collier's last four games, pretty forgettable numbers there. Six without a rebound against Wisconsin in the loss. Eight, just two boards in the loss here to Minnesota. Four in the win over Northwestern. And then uh, the season low, two points against Purdue on Saturday. I think a lot of it, he's thinking and thinking and thinking and is very, very tentative rather than just playing. ESPN's exclusive coverage of the Australian Open. Tennis's first major continues later tonight. First ten was in 1986, and they had one heck of a team in 86. They lined up with Tarpley and company. They had Gary Grant in that club, Richard Relford and Henderson, and that was an outstanding club, Antoine Joubert. They guys like Glenn Rice and Lloyd Vaughn on the bench for that team. Yeah, Rice came off the bench. They won back-to-back -back Big Ten titles, 85 and 86. They won three in a row, though, in the era of Azzy Russell, back in the 60s. And you mentioned the 89 team, which eight years down the line still has all five starters in the NBA still today. As Reed regains the three-point touch, 15 points for Neil Reed. I'll tell you, I know Clark Kellogg's probably thinking what I'm thinking. How could he get open for that three when he's their number one option? Michigan has to be aware of that. I know the coaches talked about it today at the shoot-around, but they're allowing him to get good looks at the goal. Mandeville called for this foul, and you raise an excellent point because after the first one goes, you have to assume it's going to be his night, and they really haven't uh, reacted as such to Neil Reed. Well, they got to get right up in his face. They can't get him those looks. It was just like the scouting reports when Clark played at Ohio State. The word was, you got to block him out. You can't let him get to the glass. He was a tremendous Windex man. Fifth point for Taylor. Here's Reed, and here's how open he's getting. Well, he's using the screen really well. They just ran a great screen to free him for that jumper, and he runs that flare cut exceptionally well. They do a lot of three-man basketball offensive sets to run that, to get that in practice every day. And I tell you, it also helps when you're that far behind the arc. He was a good five or six feet beyond at that time. So they're going to try to set him up again. They're going to try to set him up again off the screen. Briefly open because of the Mandeville pick. And Taylor stepped out though really well. Gave good help. Michael Lewis straight on against Brandon Hughes. Shot clock is at eight. There's another screen. They get the screen for that wing jumper. Miller probably not meaning to hit the glass that time. Three on two. Bullock. Who has been slow getting on track his fifth point. I think Lewis did a great job in their primary running game there. Pulled up rather than out of control. Rocking foul, Travis Conlon. Psychologically, I think it's big for Indiana to get in that locker room with the lead after the way they started. If they go in in a deficit, I think that'll be really, really a big blow to them after the start they had as Coach Knight talking to Neil Reed, benched him for the first half against Northwestern. In the meeting here, almost a year ago to the day, 26 points, 8 for 11 three-pointers. Well, it was a shootout between Bullock and Reed. They were really knocking down threes. Eight for Reed, seven for Bullock. In fact, I remember that game saying, hey, let everybody else sit down and let these two go one-on-one -on -one down here. Let them play by themselves. And they pretty much did. 
Hoosiers won at 99-83. Michigan won it at Ann Arbor, 61-50. They have taken four of the last five overall from Indiana. He's got great touch. He's also added his ability to drive with the basketball. Got a lot of experience by playing with that USA Select goal team. Lewis Bullock broke the heart of Gary Williams at Maryland. And what a job Williams has done this year. Bullock this summer got a chance to play against Isaiah Thomas and has changed his uniform number in his honor. Yeah, he loves Isaiah. I don't blame him. The former Hoosier who played here and led Indiana to the 81 national title. The best little man ever to play the game. Inch for inch, pound for pound, Hall of Famer, no doubt, Isaiah Thomas was the best. Miller stepped out of bounds into the Michigan ball when we return to champions. 1976 winning the finals over the Michigan Wolverines. Well, Michigan had in that era, they had Ricky Green and Phil Hubbard, who's one of really outstanding scouts now in the NBA. And that was the great team of Indiana. I thought the best team I've ever seen assembled in terms of playing as a team and understanding their roles. Scott May, Wilkerson, Buckner, Benson, Abernathy. The last unbeaten champion. Taylor misses. I thought they would have won it in the year prior had Scott May not broken his arm. Steve Green. Steve Green, right. Scott May. Scott May, yeah, player to you. Scott May broke his arm. Steve Green. Uh, okay, oh, we're going to wrestle you over this. We're, we're going to go for dinner on this one. We're going to go for dinner. Somebody in the studio, help me out. I want to get a dinner from Dave Barnett. Well, Michigan hanging within five. They've had a number of runs come from the Hoosiers. tenacity tonight six points for Miller seven point lead great defensive effort thus far by Indiana gets a really talented well-drilled Michigan team who has been playing as you said earlier on fire last five games winning four out of five in a big ten other than a tough loss at Minnesota traveling on Baston Sixth Michigan turnover. Here's the work on the offensive board by Miller a moment ago. Yes, Charlie Miller. Something they haven't done well this year in a Big Ten. Get on the offensive glass. They've been out-rebounded 2-1 to one on the offensive boards. Oh, that's where you want to get in a gap. A little zigzag. Reverse it. you got to reverse it. Try to get a little dribble penetration. They're trying to say, look, find Reed. Find Reed. Somebody find Reed. Well, better awareness at time by both Bullock and Conlon. And it frees up space for Mandeville inside. Mandeville, excellent play inside. Miller tonight with five offensive rebounds. Listen to this crowd. Listen to these Hoosier fans. This Hoosier hysteria, baby! Air ball by Hughes. And they all blocked out. Something you don't see often. What a great first half, Dave. Defensively by the Indiana kids, playing shorthanded. Playing without Patterson, the star player. Green, just off for another three. Kept alive by Mandeville. Another offensive rebound there, eight. Outboarded by a two-to-one margin in conference play of the offensive glass, and at least for tonight, they have corrected that problem. This is a travel on Lewis. Take a look right now. When a shot goes up, you're going to watch great blockouts. We're going to see the shot. Now watch the Indiana players. Freeze it right there. Freeze it. Look at the blockouts. Look at the blockout. Everybody's got a guy. Oh, this is really super. You don't see that too often. Everybody stays between their man and the basket. Dave Barnett is busy looking at that guy, finding out if it's Steve Green or Scott May. I'm telling you, I'm taking you for dinner. It's Scott May. Yeah, well, bizarre. One way or the other. To the deck, and Reed ends up with a loose ball and gets timeout. Two great plays there. I'll tell you, what a hustling game tonight. You talk about playing with feeling, with unbelievable enthusiasm, the three E's, energy, enthusiasm, and excitement. And when you play like this, baby, you got a chance to win. Look at him scrap and claw. Hey, this is the Super Bowl. Hey, Bobby Knight, I know who he wants to win the Super Bowl. His buddy, Bill Parcells, they coached at West Point together. Parcells was an assistant when Bobby Knight was the head coach at West Point. Coming up on the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report with Gary and Clark, 
A look at Pitt against number 22 Boston College, Rhode Island, and UMass. An early Rhode Island lead in that one. And uh, an analysis of the sleeper in the Big Ten. All that coming up about a minute from now. Indiana can add to already its biggest margin of the night. Michigan get a little bit more aggressive whenever Reed touches the ball. They got to try to shade him. Got to find number five. Got to find number five. How about 21? That'll do. What a great interior pass. I mean, what a great interior pass. We said they had a play, Dave. You and I talked about it. A perfect game. They have played nearly a perfect half to be able to be up on this talented Michigan team. And I'll tell you what else. The crowd has made up for the absence of Patterson. Yeah, but you know what really happened? They played so well early, Mouye Zinovich set the tone and tempo for the crowd. Gave them something to cheer about and get excited about. Gave them some hope. Michigan scoreless since the 4-15 mark turns it over. And that'll do it for the first half. And it was a near-perfect Indiana Hoosier first half. Never trailed in the first half, and they currently enjoy their largest margin at 11, 42-31. Dave Barnett back with Dick Vitale. We know the crowd can sustain its emotion and intensity for the entire second half. Can the Hoosiers? Well, I'll tell you, not only the emotion, they have to really execute. I think Michigan's going to really make a run here. Remember, they were up 23 on Michigan State, and yet that lead disappeared. Take a look at him using the screens right now. They're going to set up two screens that he's going to run off. We see one coming up right now, up on top and one down there, and you're going to see Reed pop out to the three-point line. He's going to pop out, flare out. They call it the flare move. Square his body and knock it down. The perfect execution using two screens to run off as we look at Bullock with seven in the first half in the Battle of the Guards and 15 for Reed. He was on fire. And yes, you owe me dinner. Uh, you know, as I recall, they... <laughs> Our rabbit ear reception was really poor. I, I, <laughs> nope. We, we got several confirmations on your uh, your, your Scott made broken arm. And uh, they lost I, stand, I stand very happily corrected. They lost 92-90, Dave, to Kentucky. It was their only loss in two years. Good start for the Wolverines as Maurice Taylor hits the turnaround and draws the foul. Well, that's the guy they really got to get involved. Talking to Steve Fisher, who's done a great job getting this team to regroup after they had lost those three games, two in Hawaii and the home opener against Ohio State. There's Taylor. I mean, he's got a world of ability. Showing that little spin move, turnaround jump shot. That's the kind of start Steve needs. We talk about the first four minutes after time being a big big segment let's see how indiana answers the bell here aj guyton was really under control in our first half did not score in fact yeah he was a big time performer earlier this year out of peoria only took two first half shots collier and trailer both with score foul start the second half and count it on the goal pen by the tractor trailer he can get up at 300 pounds He's very agile. We're going to look at Collier now working on the baseline. Showing a little agility, the left-handed player with that little reverse. Muye Zinovich really set the tone for Indiana out of the gate. Trailer still looking for his first points and draws the foul. The halftime number is pretty impressive for an Indiana team that could not have been less impressive at Purdue on Saturday. Second chance points just about non-existent for them in Big Ten play this year. Well, a Big Ten play, they've been out-rebounded 2-1 to one all year in a Big Ten. Tonight, they're out-rebounded Michigan 2-1 to one on the offensive board. This will be Reed's third, and it comes on the heels of Collier's fourth. That really hurts because he can't afford to take Reed out of the game. He needs him on the floor. There's a look at track the trailer on the line. Really struggling on that free throw line. They worked with him this afternoon. And I know he works hard at it, but he's shooting under 50% on the line. 
Collier with a little limp in addition to four fouls as he checks out. And Trailer at last with his first point of the night a minute into the second half. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You wouldn't think that Indiana could be up nine. Patterson sitting down. You got Collier with four fouls. He got the nice dribble move to get that open shot. Man, when no one blocks out, Mouye Zinovich. You got to respect the kid that doesn't have great skills but plays with tremendous energy. And that's what he's doing tonight. Harris Mouye Zinovich. Go inside the trailer. Dump it into him. Dump it into the trailer. Trailer squeezing through the double team. You got to take advantage of his touch inside, his tremendous mobility. He won the game against Duke at the end, made a Big basket down the lane to beat the in fact they held Duke without a field goal the last 10 minutes and won that game with Reese Taylor on the sideline. Is that amazing? They've got a camera that doesn't usually happen. Reed briefly an open look, almost traveled. Ward popped out to deny the open shot. Guyton, though, likes what he has straight on, and he's got his first point. Well, he's gonna have to help his friend out a little bit. AJ Guyton from out of Peoria. Underrated player coming out of high school. I think he will be ultimately a special player here at Indiana. Biggest lead for the Hoosiers is 12. One thing Indiana's done is control tempo a little bit, not allowing Michigan to use their great skills and run it up and down the floor. Oh, look, and he's blocked by Miller. I'll tell you, Miller's having his best performance tonight of the year. Mandeville can't hang on to the bounce pass from A.J. Guyton. And it's not about scoring for Charlie Miller. It's that he's finally showing some aggressiveness. And there's a guy that will show you a little aggressiveness. The general Robert Montgomery Knight as we watch Miller rotating over. And there's the left-handed Miller with the block. Most great shot blockers block shots with their left hand. And Ali Buck. And he floated like a butterfly and ended up stinging that bullet. 37 Indiana. I like the Muhammad Ali. You had to call me a bum. I'll knock you out of one. This by Taylor. <laughs> Eight rebound by Charlie Miller. Double his per game average. Yeah, he's really working on a board. There's a nice little curl move for Guyton. You want to go side to side. You don't want to be a windshield wiper and dribbling that basketball. You want to go north south, but east west. Guyton, same spot. traffic by Taylor and there to block him picking up number three Mandeville he's in because Collier has four nice move by Mo we're gonna watch now them reversing the ball getting AJ Guyton free from up on top that's usually the high percentage area and shooting that three right up on top of that circle this guy was approaching his 700th mark in terms of W's in his career. Did a phenomenal job at West Point. 11 Big Ten championships. Has produced a lot of guys in a coaching fraternity. Dave Bliss and a fair coach down at Duke University by the name of Michael Krzyzewski. Seven more wins to the 700 career mark and nine more wins to the 600 mark here at Indiana. And I'll tell you, his intensity yesterday at practice was a thing that's unbelievable. In fact, I joked to him, I said, come on now. You're in the Hall of Fame, you got all these championships, and you're not in jeopardy of losing your job, and you think it's like the end of the world. He says, I hate to lose. And most of all, I hate to see my kids not play up to their potential. Foul called as uh, Baston hits the deck on Charlie Miller, his first. I think you just hit on why he has stacked up almost 700 wins. Those two factors. Yeah, his intensity is unbelievable. There are a lot of coaches out there that have that as well. But he's such a perfectionist. Taylor. Indiana has had some running opportunities tonight, but this won't be one of them. One of the keys for Indiana throughout his career has been shot selection, execution of shot selection. An NBA three for Reed, and it almost went. Stop. Brandon Hughes comes up long. Easy put back. Baston. 
There's Joe Bastin right up there with the offensive rebound, showing that great quickness. Brandon used to me as a dangerous player. He's the guy I'd be really worried about if I were Indiana. He can quickly go from one end to the other and give Michigan some momentum. He's an Uncle Mo special. He's the kind that can get the crowd quiet, especially on the road, and at home get the crowd excited. Collin much tighter on Reed as the shot clock goes under 10. Guyton starting to feel it from three-point range. Nice pass on the rears. Here comes Conlon. Nice pass by Conlon. Baston. Foul. Mandeville goes up and gets a lot of ball, but it's going to cost him his fourth personal. Nice look by Conlon to the inside. A kid that really did a great job in high school on the Lake Shore, St. Clair Shores, played for Greg Essler, now coaching at De La Salle in Michigan. Outstanding high school coach. We're going to watch Conlon now. There's going to dump the ball inside. He's going to go into the interior to Macy Obaston. Draws the contact, goes to the line. I know Kentucky wanted him badly out of high school. Rick Pitino used to talk about him with glowing terms, talking about Macy Obaston. 6-9, and his wingspan allows him to play like a 7-3 now. I'll tell you, you talk about big guys in Texas. University of Texas, Tom Penders is on cloud nine. He's got commitments for five kids, 6-9 and better, that can play. It is one, one of his great recruiting classes from out of Texas. 15-06 to go in the second half. Aston helps the Warriors back with a figure that a team missing Andre Patterson, their leading scorer and rebounder, could have pulled off the work that Indiana has on the glass tonight. They've almost matched their seasonal average for offensive work. That just means they're playing aggressive basketball, and that came out of the gate with that. And as we look at right now, Neil Reed throwing a ball in bounds, had a great first half. Patterson averaging 16 points a game and seven rebounds a game. Had one of the two great performances I witnessed this year. One by Gerald Honeycutt with 38 against Xavier, and his 39 was scintillating against Duke in a NIT championship. Two best performances, five-star performances. Well, the guy that's made up for the absence, at least on the glass. Oh, he's got Guy Miller. Nice move. Oh, nice little quick move. Matador defense right there by the track to trailer. He went right by him. Great quickness, A.J. Guyton. All eight points for A.J. here in the second half. But the fouls are really stacking up for Indiana. That's their seventh already, and we have played about five and a half minutes. Yeah, Charlie Miller really... Hooked him right there. We're going to watch Guyton make that little curl move down the lane. Now watch right here. He freezes trailer, blows right by him with superb quickness, kisses it on the glass. Count that baby. Took the rock right to the goal. 7 nothing. Second half foul. Come out of Peoria. I remember when Indiana in 93 had Chris Reynolds from out of Peoria, a tough defensive player. Brandon Hughes is from out of Peoria. Manuel would have won three straight state championships. With the kids Sergio McLean and Griffin both committed to Illinois. Aston, 68% for the season. Six for six tonight from the line as the Wolverines narrow down to nine again. Execution. Patience, poise, screen. They had the greatest screener of all. Sloan screen 45 when he played here. What screens he used to set? Jerry Sloan's son. Our great producer at that time, Fred Goodell, nicknamed of that. Sloan screen 45. Guyton with the shot clock down to seven. And not much happening, so he tries to do it on his own. And they're going to call a foul prior to the shot on Brandon Hughes. ESPN Super Bowl the head coach at West Point. Nice move by Muya Zenovic. He didn't finish it, didn't finalize it. He forced the walking violation, though. Taylor taking it well, though. He's a great kid. He really, and so is Steve. Steve Fish had a chance to talk to the Michigan kids today. What a nice bunch of kids. There's a little walking violation. He can't believe it. he says, look, he's bumping me, he's bumping me. Come on, Mr. Clark. Come on, I shake hands with him, so I like you. I, I think your talk has had an immediate effect on how to conduct yourself on and off the floor. I think it's sink in. Well, that's the only thing I talked to him about, making some good decisions and carry yourself like a real, real champ on the court and off the court. Miller. points to go with his season high eight board. I'll tell you, it must be me, Dave. I see potential stardom in that youngster. 
From deep, not quite for Ward, and Neil Reed can't quite save that one in bounds, but as usual, does everything possible to make the play. I'll tell you, you've seen right in that previous possession, a nice release by Charlie Miller. Did a great job there. Georgetown going at it with St. John's. UMass hanging tough with one of my real sleeper teams. I had him in my magazine as a sleeper. Watch out for Tyson Wheeler and the University of Rhode Island. But here comes the Minutemen. Had a big win the other day over Boston College. Problem looking for Trailer and right off his foot and out of bounds. Sloppy execution in their half-court game. See, I think the one thing Indiana has done so well here tonight, Dave, they've made it a five-on-five -five game. They're not allowing Michigan to utilize their athletic ability and get into transition. And the two guys that's really hurt, Bullock, who reaches in there along with Trailer. They are well subpar tonight. They're controlling this guy, not giving him good looks at the three-point line. Lewis Bullock, an outstanding long-range shooter. They're really trying to find him whenever he gets the ball. Nice drop step, but it won't roll home for Taylor. And Trailer battling with Muye Zinovich. It's a held ball, and it goes back over to Indiana. I thought they were playing a little ballerina right there. A little Barista Golf and Short. I don't think Barista Golf's that big, though. Hey, Steve's got the jacket on. We're going to take a look right here. The ball comes off. Oh, look, tippy toes. Playing on our toes. Look at this. Trailer taking dancing. <laughs> Indiana, 22 turnovers Saturday against Purdue, 26 in a 13-point loss to Wisconsin, only nine tonight. They've really cleaned it up. Okay. On the trailer, here comes number four. And the crowd loves it. One thing Michigan's done better defensively is to find Reed. Trailer's going to go to the sideline, but they can bring in Macy Baston. They give up power for quickness. More fouls than points tonight for the tractor trailer. There's tractor right there to get him for contact. Not much. Not much at all. Looked to me like he had all ball. He takes up so much space, and because of the size of his body, I think sometimes fouls go against him that aren't there. You know, you made a great point to me off the air. You talked about... Are there really two programs in a Big Ten as contrasting as these two in terms of the uniforms, the way they dress, the coaches' mannerisms? I mean, everything about them really is contrasting, except for the universities themselves. They're both great academic schools and both great state universities. The makeup of the roster is all you see up and down the Michigan lineup. Mr. Basketballs, so many that they can have an inordinate number of transfers, and they're still right there, 13 and 4. Taylor, and it counts. But now we've got... Oh, no, 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 no! Tommy O'Neill says it goes the other way, called the walk-in violation. Well, it doesn't count. Traveling called prior to the shot. Yeah, Tommy O'Neill with the travel. Steve Fisher's beside himself. Cannot believe it! Cannot believe it! I don't believe it either, Steve! Oh, they got a raw deal there! 11 15 Gerard Ward before the basket. Let's see if it was correct or not. We're going to watch the ball inside. Now watch the pivot foot. We're going to see his pivot foot down on the interior. Now watch this right here. There's the lift. He lifts his pivot foot. Definitely a walk. No doubt about it. He established the left foot as his pivot foot, and he lifted it prior to putting the ball to the deck. And a good call by the official because the contact came after. Sorry, Steve, baby. I was wrong. You were wrong. And the official was right again. Mr. Zebra, Tommy O'Neill. Yeah, but you got Scott May earlier tonight, so oh, yeah. you're just even. One for two. That's 500. Michael Lewis, Uye Zinovich, both had good first half. On the reverse, Guyton. I'll tell you, there's no defense on the interior right now. None whatsoever for Michigan getting layups on the inside. All 10 for A.J. Guyton have come since halftime. 15-point lead Look at for this. Indiana. Look at this, Indiana. What do you see, Indiana, ever zone? But we found trouble. They went to the zone in a timeout. Zone three times in the history of Bob Knight. Brandon Hughes shoots it right over. 
over that zone and nails his 14th three-pointer of the year. But it helps his players to get a little rest in the end. They get a foul. Michael Lewis really creates some contact, goes coast to coast, and he's an excellent free throw shooter. What the zone defense does, it allows you to protect players, number one. Number two, it slows down. Take a look right here. Right here, we're going to show the zone defensively. Right, freeze it. Right here. Their zone. They're playing an area of the floor. They're not playing a man. They're playing the area of the floor. And that's what Indiana's doing, and they very, very rarely. One time they played a zone against David Rivers and against our guy, Peter Phelps of Notre Dame, when I did the game up in South Bend, Indiana. Speaking of Notre Dame, a Big East ace. By the way, he was at the inaugural ball last night. So this is an excuse wow, to have some He's at inaugural ball having a blast. I mean, I'm jealous. I'm maybe going to go ahead and take a dance with Hillary. I mean, unbelievable. Mike's wife, by the way, went to Indiana. She may have had mixed emotions about this <laughs> decision to go to Washington instead. Knocked out. The foul before the 22nd Michigan timeout was Brandon Hughes fourth. He joins Trailer with four. Look at Reed working, trying to get free. That reminds me so much of Steve Walford. Look at him, constant motion, constant motion. Trying to bump off screens, he's getting bruised and battered. A shooter will do anything to get free, see? They'll do anything to get a shot. A shooter, he'll do anything. Guyton leans in, draws a little hip check from Lewis Bullock, and that'll be his third. So early in the first half, it was Indiana with Collier and Mandeville both picking up their fourth. Three on Bullock, Trailer and Hughes, as we said, both have four. We talked about Guyton disappearing in the first half. He has had a great second half. He has been able now, with all the attention being focused on Reed, he has gotten free for some shots, and he has stepped up here in his second half. You gotta look at the composition of the Indiana team when you see Michigan City. Right now, we look at Ward. You're looking at three freshmen who play a vital role in their rotation. And it's very tough when you play freshmen to compete. And they're not only competing. I mean, they're sitting at 15 and 4 and easily could have been 16 and 3 with a win over Minnesota. Well, uh, yeah, the point we started to make earlier, you have a Michigan that can weather all the, uh, the transfers out and still field an experienced team in Indiana out there with four contributing freshmen. There's that zone. There's that trying to play a little matchup zone. And I guarantee they don't practice that a great deal. Playing Guyton at the point of it. Freshman tonight combining for 26 points and 25 boards for Indiana. There's an impressive two and some traffic. Maurice Taylor with uh, seven of his 13 since halftime. Mo Taylor really made that happen. He really created that shot for himself. I mean, he's big. He's a star right now. I've always liked A.J. Guyton. I've always loved A.J. I think A.J. could be a star. A.J. has great potential, baby. Hughes thinks about throwing it to the corner and costs himself a better look at a wide open lane. I don't think there are many people. Look at him go to the goal. Through Mouye Zinovic and rebounded by Baston. Conlon challenging Charlie Miller and draws Miller's third. Good, good play by Travis Conlon to create a little fast pace, something that hasn't been there for Michigan. Bobby Knight sitting on a bench, wondering when's this sucker going to end. A.J. Guyton gets the screen, steps out. I mean, he's shooting that area code jumper from downtown. I mean, he was downtown South Bend, Indiana. 15 all second half for A.J. Guyton, and there's the freshman totals for tonight. Collier with uh, as many fouls as he has points. Lewis, all 10 of his in the first half. Travis Conlon, all three of his points from the foul line. This, with nine and a half minutes to go, the lead continues to mount for Indiana. Plenty of time for Michigan. Well, you made a great point earlier when you talked about the departure of a lot of Michigan kids because many of them left. Not because they're not their love for Steve Fisher to the program. TT playing time. Willie Mitchell. You think of Bobby Crawford at Rice. Olivier, who's doing a great job at San Jose State. You think about players like that. Albert White is now transferred to Missouri. Jai in North Carolina. Yeah, they lost five guys. Probably an NCAA uh, tournament lineup transferred out of here. Oh, exactly. A lot of those kids that play together would win. Traveling on Guyton. Indiana, though, really cutting back on uh, their turnover problems tonight. 
transfers include some uh, some pretty good talents in that group. Yeah, all Marco Polos, I mean, traveling people. Very dangerous time now for Indiana. They got to watch a spurt by Michigan, and they really got to understand that this baby's not over, even though they're up 13 with 850. Trailer with a great oh. look inside, and Taylor will go for three. Maurice Taylor, I said it earlier. I mean, he's got all kinds of star ability. Hey, I wouldn't want Robert Trailer chest bumping with me. I'll tell you what, you get bruised a little bit, baby. We're going to watch a nice pass, the left-handed dump inside by Trailer to Taylor. T to T. T to T. Now, you don't want to talk any trash now, Maurice. You don't want to talk any trash. See, smart move. He says, nice play, nice play. Don't want to get him angry. You remember what you told him earlier today. <laughs> The foul on Miller, by the way, his fourth. As Taylor's three-point play draws Michigan back within 10. See, I think Indiana's got to come out of that zone. They're really leaving a lot of gaps in the zone. Gave him a little bit of a rest. Maybe give him a little energy now. They're going to use some clock, too. Play for that high-percentage shot. That's a high-percentage shot. Usually, this one goes up and over, and he had Bullock on the deck. I think he was shocked that he was that wide open coming up that curl move in that down screen. Neil Reed had 15 in the first half. Nothing so far in the second half. Just the opposite of A.J. Guyton's evening. But they've been a good tag team. Bullock from way behind the arc. He's got to come out of the zone. There are gaps and seams in that zone. They're not matching up. They're getting good looks. Indiana has got to come out of that zone. They look a little tired, too, the Hoosiers. This is an 8-0 Michigan run. Steel, drive, Ward misses the lay-in. Oh, great play. Follow by Brandon he Hughes. Needs, he needs a timeout. They got to make an adjustment. They need a little rest. We said it was a danger time about three minutes ago that we felt Michigan might go on a little bit of a run. This is a big possession. Indiana's got to come up with a score here. They need a little momentum to stop this Michigan run. Into the hands of Reed and around. What you want your star player and your experienced player to do make the big play want the rock when the game is really tough reed ending a 10 point unanswered spurt by michigan ward early on had a couple of threes and he's scoreless in the second half what a great drive right there by neil reed i mean that was big Throw it in the post. A lot of good things happen. Now kick it back out. Mouillet's in of it around Trailer, who can't do much for four fouls. I'll tell you, Robert Trailer, they're attacking him. You're right, Dave. Good call. He's got the four fouls, partner. And he's just playing Matador defense. Back up to nine. It was down to five. Falls for it inside. Hughes won't give it to him. Exactly. They're going to throw the ball inside a little bit. Throw it in the wall. Bullock does. What tremendous the... agility for a guy who... Oh, he's agile, mobile. He can be a little hostile, and I'll flat out tell you, he is not fragile. Trailer on a subpar foul play night brings him within seven. Reed! Oh, oh Reed, baby! Oh, this crowd loves it in Hoosier hysteria! Six 20 point game of the year for Neil Reed. Turnover by Hughes. I can't even hear you. This crowd is absolutely bananas. Oh, is it exciting? I love it, baby. I love it. Neil Reed, tickle the twine. I'm the ass of the got here is Hoosier hysteria at its best. It has really been a special environment tonight. I know Clark has been in an environment like this having played at Ohio State. And there's always been some really unbelievable tussles between the Buckeyes. I remember one year here with Jimmy Jackson and company. It was special, but this place is rocking tonight. What a supporting factor they have been. Truly a six-man, especially with the news that Patterson was not going to play. They gave these kids a great lift right out of the gate. Andre Patterson, slight dislocation, left kneecap yesterday. Not in uniform tonight. Big block, and here comes Hughes. Still plenty of time for Michigan to get it going again, and Brandon Hughes provides the one-man fast break to cut it to eight. It was 15. Michigan ran off 10 on action points and may be coming back again. I think Brandon Hughes is one of the really talented athletes that Michigan has that really is the difference in their club. Last 
year and this year. He provides such a spark off the bench with his superb quickness. All-American at Barton County Community College. Last junior college guard for this program. He reminds a lot of people of Ricky Green, who also hailed from Illinois. Well, Ricky Green had ultra quickness. He was like a blur. Nice kick out. you got to make the open shot. Good recovery, though, by Ward. Mugazinovich hesitant. Should have taken it. Shot clock at two. Miller from 18. See, they got to stop the ball. Indiana's not stopping the ball now on use, allowing too much of an attacking area. Robert Trailer. One more. Tip back to him by Taylor. Can't control him inside. If he gets more touches inside, he's like unstoppable on the interior. He's played his best basketball tonight Nick, foul. after his fourth foul. Exactly right. Well, he's getting more touches. They're starting to look for the big guy inside. A.J. Guyton drawing the 6-9 ward. Wolverines look at each other with puzzled expressions. This is it for Trailer. He has fouled out. to see what the officials call here. Let's check. We're going to take Reed going through. Oh, there's the bump by Trailer. Now, why would he bump or make contact with four fouls? You tell me that, Dave. The guard is going well, through. Wasn't a whole lot of contact. I, really, he didn't try to get out of the way, but I, I don't think he really leaned in for the hip check either. But you got to be so cautious. You're on the road. You're too valuable to your team. I think he gets some tough calls. There's no doubt about it because of his body and his great size. But that time, he leaned right out at Reed. Well, he leaves with seven points. And his team trailing by six with 424 to go. Guy, no rainbow three, almost. Big Taylor. possession here for Michigan. Taylor has really stepped up big. I think Michigan's got to find a way to get Lewis Bullock to look at the goal. Reed matched up with him now. They're playing zone. They're trying to find him. They're going to try to run Bullock, overload the zone. Ward left wide open. He's not had a three since early. Baston puts it back. Baston doing a good job on the offensive glass. A lot of seams in that defense. You don't get blocked out of Simons. We talk about that regularly out of the zone. As close as the Wolverines have been since they fell back 65-50. One thing that Indiana does well is execute at that free throw line and shoot about 80%. Three hair trigger on the turn. Baston clears. Indiana staying in that zone because they're kind of small. Michigan can cut it to two. If they get a three, they can make this a one-point game. But one big player on the floor, Mouye Zinovich. There's the contact. Michigan certainly right now is the aggressor offensively. Indiana hanging on, looking at that clock every moment, trying to hope that time just disappears. Thursday night, we four Big Ten action. W's Nate Johnson, a great freshman week, a tremendous senior. Beat Texas down 15, come back and win that game in Austin. Hey, he's a baseball player. That's Jim Tomey. He gave me, no, 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 we missed him. We had Jim Tomey a little bit early. He looked like Tomey, doesn't he? That was Collier. But Jim Tomey, Tomey but he, he could be a, a cousin at least. They do yeah, have Jim, quite a resemblance. Jim Tomey's here, the baseball player of the Indians. Gave me a hat. 3.17 to go. Bobby Knight has not trailed all evening, but his lead has been trimmed. Took me right there, on a, right next to him with the white shirt. John Hart, the general manager, went out and got Matt Williams. He'll go to third. Tommy will go to first. Had 38 homers. See, I follow my baseball. You tell Peter Gammons to watch out. I'm going to do baseball. <laughs> Peter does a great job. In and out on Miller's three. And a hell ball. What you need is more air time. That'd be a great way to get it. Move you over to baseball. The NASDAQ storyline, Michigan in the second half, near perfect. 13 of 14 overall, 19 of 22. Trailer's gone. Indiana has not trailed. Guyton has helped 
maintain the lead with his 15 second half points but here come the Wolverines with a chance to tie or lead as we go under three minutes and as Indiana sitting in that zone playing short-handed Collier out with four fouls limped off a little bit they're playing Charlie Miller they're playing almost like four guards out there with Luye Zinovich trying to match up in that zone don't get a lot of blockouts assignments so the missed shot becomes a dangerous shot Luye Zinovich with a gamble leaves Ward open halfway down tipped out to Dayton Indiana needs a big basket badly they have really struggled as of late they're stumbling and then we've got to assume that Collier is out not just because he has four fouls he limped to the bench after picking up his wrong. Gotta get a screen out there, maybe for Lewis. Keep the big 6-9 Ward. Henri drives right past and misses the finish. He doesn't finalize, makes a great drive down the lane. Oh, look, shoot the lead. Hustling rebound after a 94-foot sprint by Neil Reed. Now you have to play patience, managing the clock, so important. End of game strategy, time, situation, knowing your strengths. You got to go to your strengths now. Reed's got to be their number one option. Guyton maybe with a cut to the goal. He's got quickness. See, I think Guyton with his quickness can beat the big guy guarding him one. Got clock at six for Miller. Here's Guyton. Got to beat him. There's the quickness. Leaner from ten. Tip. What a great effort. It doesn't go down, but what a great effort. Taylor takes a long time getting up, and Hughes delayed his dribble to make sure he was okay. Timeout, Michigan, with a minute 13 to go. Indiana really struggling offensively. Three to seven, Michigan run. Indiana without Patterson all night. And after he picked up his fourth foul, Jason Collier limped to the bench and has not been seen since. Hey, Indiana hasn't had a field goal in the last five minutes. Went 0 for 8. Rick City has a look at Collier on that sideline. And that's why they've stayed in that zone. You know, with 65-50 when they went on a 27 run. Trailer on the sideline. Here it is, that zone. Oh, that's the guy that wants to shoot it. Bullock misses, chased down by Gerard Ward, and tipped out by Michigan. Offensive rebound went to Michigan. He wants a 20-second timeout. Steve Fisher, they got the shot they wanted. Bullock from the overload in the baseline. Indiana went a little big then. He's going to watch the ball. There's the hustle. Hughes goes after it. They say Hughes touched the ball last. Ward says we're going the other way. Tommy O'Neill says, no, we're not. We're going up to Indiana's way. They did get the shot they wanted. And the last two times down, Indiana got the shots they wanted. Reed missed a layup, and Guyton missed a couple. Well, you know, that layup by Reed, it was in traffic, but he was right there. I don't think he realized how open, as we look here, at the situation in terms of fools and timeouts. Reed has played such a gutty game. He and his team shorthanded. Andre Patterson out. How you're injured sitting on the sideline. Do they have enough to survive the run here by the Wolverines? We are told that there is no medical reason uh, for Collier. Oh, they want a foul there. Double up. Look diagonal against the trap. Michigan had that foul to give. That's number six, and it is the first on Maurice Taylor. And the one thing it does, take some time off the clock, and Indiana gets the ball out, and certainly the general likes that. Wants to run that clock down as much as possible. No one has ever won the Big Ten with over five losses. Indiana trying to avoid its fourth loss already this year in six games. And a second loss at home, which is so unusual. They're, in fact, the only team to win it with four losses. They did it in 80 and 83. Want some time off the clock right now. They ultimately like to get the ball in Dyson or Reed's hands. Or Lewis, they're going to play with their perimeter people. They'll be attacked with their perimeter people. Reed against Bullock with five. He's got to shoot it. Guyton open at the buzzer and missed it. Louie Zinovich for the loose ball and out of bounds off of Charlie Miller. Great hustle on the inside. Indiana 0 for 9 in their last nine attempts have come up empty. They needed one basket to give them a little room. Going to watch right now. Guyton shooting the jumper. Louie 
Zinovich going to work on the inside, keep the ball alive on the offensive ball. The ball goes to the deck. Ball goes off the Indiana player, Charlie Miller. Good call by the officials. What a barn burner. It's Mailock's time. You think his sub stomach is churning, baby? up when we finish our business here at SEC matchup as the Razorbacks of Arkansas trying to bounce back from as bad a defeat as they've had since 1958 at the hands of Cincinnati. They play host of the Mississippi State Bulldogs following us at the conclusion of Indiana, Michigan. Well, you know right now Michigan's going to try to attack the glass. The most dangerous players on the floor on a missed shot by the Michigan aggressive athletes. And that's going to be a danger area that Bobby Knight's got to be concerned about. In the event of a missed shot, the offensive rebound. So many games I have seen won in situations like this where a guy misses a shot and everybody thinks it's over and there's a tip in or an offensive rebound for the layup. In this case here, Michigan can go for the tide. If it goes to overtime, I got to give the edge to Michigan. I think they're just so worn out, Indiana. Even though majority of the times you give the edge to the home club, I think in this situation, Dave, you give the edge to the Wolverine. If the three is available to Bullock, Bullock, in terms of getting the open shot in their offense, you take the three. But basically, if the two is there, you take the two and go to overtime and try to win it and overpower them with your strength. They are out of timeouts. Eight seconds to go. Indiana's got a timeout. He's going to use it to see the alignment. Wow, this is unbelievable. We're getting paid for this day? Getting paid? Please don't tell my boss. Don't tell my boss I'd do this for nothing. I won't if wow. you won't. Well, back for the windup in Bloomington in a moment. Go to if they come back and win this, and again, they trail from the opening tip on, can make it five wins in their last six games and move to just a half game off the Big Ten pace. And also they make up for the loss at home to Ohio State. Bullock, a great three-point shooter, 45% for the season from three-point range. You know they're going to find him. Indiana's going to try to pressure a little bit to make some time come off that clock. Make Michigan really work to get the ball up the floor. They're going to come back to the basketball. Youth has got great speed, great penetration ability. You've got to stay between him and the goal. There it is. Oh, there it is. What a great W for these Indiana kids. They played shorthanded, and this guy had them ready to play as they beat an outstanding Michigan team, and the crowd deserves an unbelievable hand from all the Indiana players. Look at that respect all the players. Bullock respect. wanted to avoid overtime and have it all settled right here on the three and set it from the right quarter. He had the good look. Long. And right there, a great rebound by Indiana. The reaction of the Indiana bench. There's Andre Patterson. Oh, what a beautiful night in Hoosier land. Indiana wins it 72-70 for Dick Vitale, Dave Barnett. Thanks for joining us. Let's head back to the studio in Gary and Clark. All right, Dave and Dick, that's going to be hard to Super Sunday.